Okay, so we have uh, some organic chemistry practice questions that we'd have to look at even as we prepare for for exams. So question one says name the functional groups. Question two requires us to provide the UPAC name for the given molecules there. Okay, so from the questions, uh, we'd have to talk about the functional groups just before we get to identify the functional groups that we have. So, some of the common functional groups that you would need to know are a case where you have a carbon, a carbon connected to oxygen by a double bond. So, such a group, such a function group is referred to as a carbonium. Okay, so that is called a carbonium. Okay, it's a very common functional group that we are going to work with. So the same carbonyl, in a case where it is connected to NH2, the name changes. It is now gets to what we are calling an amide functional group. And then, a case where we just have a carbon joining to NH2. This function group is called amino. Okay. So we can move on. There's a case where you have carbon being double bonded to oxygen and then also to an oxygen by a single bond. Okay. So in such a case, we call that to be an ester. So that is an ester group. Okay. And then we can also talk about a case where we have oxygen forming two single bonds connected to the carbons. In such a case, that is called an ether. Okay. So these are the common function groups that we should expect. Of course, the beauty about these is uh, ethers and esters, they remain to be classes as they are. For the others, the amine. The amine no functional group falls under what we call amines as a class. The amide, the class is amides from the functional group itself. Now, if you go to the interesting part about carbonyl is there are two cases whenever you're talking about a carbonyl group. There are some cases where it is between, it is joined to a carbon which is between other carbon atoms and also a case where it is at the carbon at the end. Okay, as in the case shown there. So in this case, a class of this carbonyl group where it is in between, we call this uh, as a ketone. So these are called ketones. That's a class. A case where it is at the end, where the carbonyl group is at the end, we call that as uh, howdyites. So in case they ask you for the two classes of where the carbonyl group falls. So a carbonyl group can be split into two classes, ketones and howdyites, depending on the part where we have a carbonyl group joining, on which carbon it is connected to. Okay, so with that in mind, we are now able to approach the questions with confidence. Okay. So we need to first of all name the functional groups that are shown in the structures. So there is this functional group which I have not talked about. So it's a case where the carbonyl group can also be joined to OH. So that becomes a carboxyl. Okay. Carboxyl. Different from a carbonyl. Okay. So a class of such compounds, carboxylic acids. And then there's just a case where you have carbon being joined to OH. So as a functional group that is known as hydroxy or hydroxyl. Both two cases are okay. The class, we know that the class is a class of what? Alcohols. Thank you. So with that in mind, if we look at what we have, this is a carbon connected to OH and the carbonyl. So this basically matches up with what? Matches up with a carboxyl as a function group. And then the other one that we have on our left, that is a carbonyl. Okay, so we can quickly move to the other example. 
So the other example, we have a carbon new joined to NH. So whenever you have a carbon new, whether joined to a, a nitrogen alone, it is still referred to as an amide. Okay. And of course, that is an alcohol. So as a function group, it is called hydroxyl. Okay. So those are the function groups that we have in the two first questions. And then as we go to the other one, where we ask now to to give the IUPAC name for the molecules, you feel free to pause the video and just try them out, looking at what we have. So each time we are naming a compound, we should be able to identify the longest chain of carbon atoms. So if we count, so we have 10. So making it to be decan as the parent name. Now, as we get to observe the structure, there is a double bond there. So it becomes decane instead of decane. So identify the substance. So that is isopropyl because we have three carbons joined together. The fact that it is joined using the middle carbon makes it to be iso. So this is a case that you have. And then it is joining to the parent structure. And then that is methyl, methyl, and methyl. So we have got three methyls there. So we have to identify them, their positions. We can do that. So the substance that we've identified, we've identified isopropyl. We've also identified methyl on three positions. So we would have to start from a direction where we would have to have a lower position. So I believe in this case, starting from the left hand side, the first substance would be on carbon 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Starting from the right hand side, the first thing is going to be on 2. So we can go for that. So that we have decaying or our ENE, our kin being on carbon 2. And then methyl, in that case, so we have 1, 2. So we have our first methyl group on carbon 3. And then as we count on carbon 4, carbon 5 is nothing. And then carbon 6, we have another methyl. And then carbon 7, we have isopropyl. Okay, so we can now alphabetize this. We can alphabetize iso and cycro. We can't alphabetize tri. In this case, we are saying tri because we have got three methyl groups joined to our parent structure. So therefore, which one comes first? In this case, which uh, I gets to come first in naming. So we have seven iso propyl. So let me just... Okay, so seven iso propyl. And then we have three, four, six, tri. Tri methyl. And then, of course, on position two, we have dekin. That is where we have a double bond there. Okay. So basically, this is the name of that, of this structure. And then the other one, we have a cyc something that is cyclic. So count the number of carbons. It is six-sided, so it is called cycro. So if you got the prefixes of organic uh, compounds, number six is is exen, right? So cycro exen. Now, in this case, we have OH connected, which is a class of compounds called alcohols. So as an alcohol as a suffix, we call it. We add OL, so it becomes cycro. Exanol. Okay, so all you are doing is you are removing the E for an alkane and then adding OL for the alcohol. So each time you have a cyclic compound, look at what is I in priority. So, of course, we know carboxylic acid is like highest. Okay, so in this case, we only have an alcohol, so we'll give it the first position. So, our counting would have to start from there. So, we have carbon one, carbon two, and carbon three. So on carbon 3, we have got two carbons 
connected so making that to be a few so therefore in terms of naming this prefix would have to be three a few and then dash cycro external okay so that is the name of that structure okay so as you prepare for your exams the best way to prepare is uh, looking at multiple questions that have come in the past papers look at each topic try to see how they ask questions differently be able to look at tutorials as well as your your notes on how to go about the questions and that will build your confidence even as you get to approach your your different papers okay so if you wish to have access to more of such questions which have been solved in videos use the link in the description to just register as I even get to send past paper questions with solutions okay so thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day remember you have 11 days before your paper chemistry 1000